everybody, my name is Chef Sharon Vasahi and I am a pastry chef lecturer at Capsicum Durban. We teach an array of different courses but I am pastry chef lecturer and we are going to be teaching you how to make biscuits today. So a little bit about me, I graduated from Capsicum in 2012 and I went out into the industry and worked in many five-star establishments and worked my way up and learned some more things and tips and tricks out there. And then I decided to open my own pastry business where we make wedding cakes and whatnot. Then I decided that I would like to teach all of you beautiful people. So I went back to Capsicum and became a teacher. So if you decide to join us after your studies, which we would absolutely love, we will be teaching you an array of different things and I will be one of your pastry chef lecturers including recipes such as the biscuits that we're going to be making today. So the purpose of our demo today is that it is Mother's Day on Sunday and with us being in this lockdown it's a bit difficult for us to go out and buy flowers and chocolates but we still want to spoil our moms. So why not give baking some biscuits a try? So we can bake some biscuits, we can frost them, and I promise you, your mother will love them 10 times more than a bunch of flowers from anywhere else. So let's begin. Okay guys, so the first thing you want to do is you want to get all of your equipment ready, set up, and roaring to go before you start anything. So what you're going to do is you're going to start by turning on your oven to the fan or the convection setting at 160 degrees Celsius. You're going to need a baking tray and some baking parchment paper. If you also have a non-stick mat, that's also absolutely fine. It's just to prevent the cookies from sticking to your tray. So you're gonna get all good old faithful uh, cooking spray. If you don't have any, you can just brush the pan lightly with some oil. So you're just gonna spray the tray just to get enough on it to, to allow your parchment paper to stick to your tray. So you're gonna cut, have your cut parchment paper to side and you're gonna pop it on your tray and press it down and you'll see that the cooking spray allows it to stick nice and flat to your tray. Secondly, you're gonna need a rolling pin, a spatula, a offset spatula, or if you don't have one, you can also use a lifter, you can always use your hands, but I will explain exactly what we need this for later. And obviously the cookie cutters that you want to make to your shape. I have a kitty, I'm really sorry. So he might meow, but um, we're in lockdown, so we gotta work with what we got. So guys, if you are gonna be attempting this recipe today, please just remember to ask your parents because we don't wanna have any oopsies in the kitchen. Okay, so the ingredients that we, we will be using in our recipe today is flour, sugar, and butter, which makes up pretty much most of your pastry items these days. So those are the good old faithfuls. Next, we're gonna be using some baking powder, a pinch of salt, a single room temperature egg, and some vanilla essence. So if you're worried about quantities, we are going to include this full recipe for you guys in this video, so don't worry about it. After you've watched, you can go and read the recipe and it's going to tell you everything that I'm explaining today as long as with all the steps and the measurements for your ingredients. Okay guys, so there's been a huge emphasis on hygiene and safety during this lockdown, so it should have come as no surprise to you that before we start anything in the kitchen, we're going to wash and sanitize our hands. Like the good old videos that they've got all over Facebook and whatnot on how to wash your hands. We're going to make sure we're nice and clean before we cook. so that we don't make anyone sick. And the same applies with our work surfaces. We wanna make sure that you've cleaned and wiped down and you have a nice, clean, dry work surface to start with. So let's begin making our dough. We're gonna start our dough by combining all of our dry ingredients, which is your flour, your salt, and your baking powder. So you're just gonna give it a very gentle stir just to kind of get it all together. Don't worry if you get a bit of flour everywhere because I promise you that's going to happen. So 
Once we've combined all of our dry ingredients, we're going to set them aside. Take our butter and we're going to use your good old faithful spatula to scrape all of the butter into the bowl that you're going to be using to make your dough. So make sure to get every last bit because you don't want to change the consistency of your recipe. Once you've got your butter in the bowl, you're going to add your sugar. Just like that. Easy peasy. Next, you're going to get your electric beater. And then you're going to put it on its lowest setting. And slowly combine the butter and the sugar. So at this stage you'll see it looks quite crumbly, that's absolutely fine because it's all going to incorporate together and cream and fluff up and become light and airy. So just carry on. If you do need to, use your good old faithful spatula and scrape down the sides and carry on until you get to a pale consistency. At this point we can up the speed a little bit. before if you do feel you need to do so use your spatula to just give it a good scratch and get it all back in the middle like that so that you get to incorporate all your ingredients all together technique to it, it's just dumb. You're going to get your pizza back and you're going to put it on real slow. Let me tell you, please do not bang it up to the highest speed because you're going to have a cloud of flour everywhere and your mom is not going to be impressed. So we put it on our lowest speed and it's just to start combining that butter mixture with our flour. You'll see it becomes quite a bread crummy texture, which is what you're looking for. So you're going to transfer your dough onto your work surface, and now is the part where it gets a little bit fun and messy. So you're going to make sure you grab all the bits out of your bowl, and you're going to start working this dough by hand. So you're slowly just going to squeeze it, bring it together, manipulate it around. You want to get all of those little crumbs in there so that you get all of your dough. So whilst you're pushing it all together and you're getting it all into a nice smooth dough, you don't want to overwork it and you want to work relatively quickly because the heat from your hands is going to melt the butter. So we're going to quickly just move it around, try and get all those crumbs in there. And then we can start flipping it over, giving it a little bit of knead. And once you're pretty happy that it's all come together, you want to start shaping it into a smooth ball. So you kind of want to end up with like a nice round ball. You don't want to see a lot of cracks on the top because when you roll out your dough, it's going to crack your biscuit. Okay, so the next step is we're going to roll out and cut our cookie shapes so that we can bake them. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take our nice ball of dough and now we're going to lightly flour our surface. Okay, so then we're going to transfer our dough to our floured surface and we're going to really, really lightly sprinkle a bit on top just because we don't want to end up with really, really dry biscuits. So we're going to make sure that we put a little bit of flour on our rolling pin to make sure that it doesn't stick into your dough and then we're going to roll. So you want to start by going forward and backwards really slowly might feel like it's not getting very big and then you're going to gently shift it 
just give it a little roll around so that it can pick up a little bit more flour on the bottom and not stick. And then we're gonna go from the other direction. And like you can see, like I said, like you didn't want cracks on the top of your dough. It's a really nice smooth consistency and there's not really much cracking going on. So if that's what you see, you've nailed it. So you're gonna keep rolling until you're just about half a centimeter thick, which is the ideal thickness for this biscuit so that you get the right ratio of icing to biscuit. So now we're going to cut our cookie shapes. So for our demo today, we've got a plain round cookie cutter and a heart for your mom for Mother's Day. So you want to just rub your, your uh, cutter in a little bit of flour just so it doesn't stick while you're cutting. So you pop it on. So next we're going to pop our cookies in the oven. You want to generally put it on your mid-level, not on your top level in case the top goes too brown. But if you don't really have a lot of wraps in your oven, the lower the better. And you want to make sure it's nice and centered so that it cooks evenly all around. Okay, so once your cookies are in the oven, you want to bake them for 14 to 15 minutes. The distinct way in which you will know your cookie is ready is that it's got a tiny little bit of brown around the edge and that it's quite firm to the touch. If they're still a little bit soft when you take them out of the oven, it's okay. As soon as they cool, they'll firm up and get that nice crunch to them. So as soon as you've got your cookies in the oven, it's very important to set your timer. So I've got my little elf friend over here. So I'm going to set him to 14 minutes. If you take your cookies out of the oven and you feel that they do need a tiny little bit more time, then feel free to put them back in and just keep a nice close eye. Okay, so your cookies are ready and now you need to take them out of the oven. Please use an oven mitt or you can also use a dish towel that's been folded a couple of times, just make sure that they dry. And then you're gonna open your oven and have a look. Pull them out of it and those look perfect. So this batch of cookies has been in for 14 minutes. But I'm absolutely happy to say that they are cooked and ready to go. When you are finished with your oven and you're not going to be making any more cookies, do us a favor, turn it off. So the reason that we can tell that these cookies are ready is that they're relatively firm. They're a little bit spongy, but like I said earlier, when they cool, they'll firm up. And you can pick it up and it's going to keep its shape. There's a tiny little bit of browning on the outside, which is absolutely perfect because we're going to frost them. So we're going to make some American buttercream so that we can frost on top of the cookies for your mums. So what you're going to be needing is a 150 grams of butter, 150 grams of icing sugar and just a dash of vanilla essence. So you don't want to use too much so that you don't get a really mixed, like soft mixture. So you're going to start by adding your butter to your bowl, just like before getting all the little bits out of your bowl. And then we're going to get our handheld mixer again, put it on a low speed and just loosen the butter up. You don't really want to beat it too much at this stage. So that's good enough for me. You want to use sifted icing sugar, so do go ahead and put your icing sugar through a sieve before you add it to your mixture. And then you're just going to pop it in like that. And like we said before, we don't want a giant cloud of flour. We don't want a giant cloud of icing sugar. So we're going to put it on a really low mixture. But do be prepared because there is a tiny little bit of mess. sugar together you want to add your little bit of vanilla essence and I think we should make this one for our moms. So I'm using a gel 
food colouring, but you can use any food colouring that you can find. Just remember that you can always put more in, but you can't take it out. So rather start off with just a little drop, because sometimes they can be quite concentrated in colour. And then you're going to slowly start mixing again. So I like to just give the sides of my bowl a scrape, just to make sure that we haven't missed any buttercream or we haven't got any sugar that hasn't been incorporated. And then just give it a tiny little bit more. So like I said, you can always add more. So I think we can make this a little bit more. coloring you want to be careful because it stains so I is going to have a pink finger for a while but that's okay so now we've made our buttercream but now we need to pipe it onto our biscuits so most stores you can buy disposable piping bags and you can find a star nozzle but you can use whatever kind of shape you want the more creative the better so the way to check your piping bag is you're going to open it up and put your nozzle in facing down and then you're going to see exactly where you need to cut. You're going to cut the edge off and gently push the nozzle through the bottom like that. And that's the piping bag that you're going to use. So then you're going to push it in a little bit to stop it from falling through and put it in a mug or a jug or anything that's going to make it easier for you to transfer your buttercream into your piping bag. If you hold your piping bag, the heat from your hands still start melting your icing and it is, if I'm just honest with you, a big pain in the butt. So I like to put mine in, an, in like a vessel that makes it easier for you to transfer it. So now we've got our beautiful pink buttercream. We just want to make sure we get every last bit of it. And we're going to start transferring it to our piping bag. The trick is to also realize that you don't want to overfill your piping bag, otherwise it's going to spoil it out the top and just make a hell of a big mess. So that's about right. And you're just going to hold the top and gently twist. And you'll see that it starts to pull your frosting down all the way to the bottom. And that is ready to pipe. So now's where the fun and creative part comes in. You grab your piping bag and we've got our cookies ready on a plate for you. And you're going to hold both hands very firmly and you're just gonna squeeze and move your piping bag. So we're making a little rosette for the round cookies and I think we can make a little heart shape for the heart. And there are your cookies for Mother's Day. So that's it from me, and you've made your beautiful cookies that I'm telling you hopefully your mother's going to love. So make sure that they're nice and fresh for Sunday and go and give her some.